really think that... And are you rolling? For to those that control Grayskull will come the power. Hello, He-Man community. My name is Randall Lobb. I'm one of the writer, director, producers of Power of Grayskull. We've lined up the trains. They're filled with gear. When we go into a definitive history of, we don't fool around. Down there, the first five or six are just the lights. The cars in the back have some of our set construction materials. The rest of this rail has some of the camera gear. You'll notice the other two train sections, those are loaded up. A week and a day, and we'll be down in Torrance. We'll get all the trains lined up. They come into the depot there in El Segundo, and then we'll probably have a fleet of transport trucks to bring the stuff in. We'll set up, and man, we'll start shooting. You'll see the fruition of all of this logistical excitement. It's like an invasion, but it's a friendly invasion. It's a, a fun invasion. Mark Hussey at work. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Some of you might recognize uh, what's on the screen here. Anybody excited yet? This is uh, some raw footage from a shoot we did with uh, some local friends of ours, some She-Ra and He-Man fans. And their young girl is quite a She-Ra fanatic. Yeah, so she's new gen. For the honor of Grayskull! This is a treasure trove of clips and things that in typ typically wouldn't show up in the movie, but thankfully, because of you guys that supported the Kickstarter, you're gonna get to see a lot of that. So I get a picture, a drawing, I don't know how have the drawing, but it had the face there. Now imagine you've got fur and a face. How the heck do you do that? And so I'm working, working, and I'm trying to, okay, so it just cobbled together with the, with the model maker, kind of like a real basic skeleton of an upper torso and a lower torso and a, like a skull. I went down to fashion design and had them make me a fur sock. And I pulled the fur sock over the skeleton and then I just out of a little piece of some kind of plastic, put the face on over the fur. So this way, the face really pops. What would you normally do after a shoot? Well, it's that's when a whole bunch of stuff happens. While we're shooting, and on this trip, uh, we have another guy going who's um, a talented uh, DIT, my brother Manny. So you'll probably be seeing him right now. They're sitting in front of you. Well, here's Rand. What? He's going in here. We got two carts. Bit of a crisis on our hands. Bit of an issue. We go, guys. Hopefully they let us on the airplane. Oh no. Hey, uh, we're a three-man team. You want to shoot our three-man team, Isaac? Look at my One, man boobs. Two. Oh, the guy that got turned back at the border. That was the third guy. He's coming up to McCarran Airport to pick up the boys. Film, uh, film production starts soon. Jumping in the car here in Vegas, and then we're gonna drive to just outside of LA for the night. And then we're gonna pick up in the morning and, and hustle on to our first interview. Should be good. Um, let's see how uh, awake the guys are. There he is! What a day. Left handed? Yeah. Nice to see you, Rob. Nice to see you too. Behind the scenes process. Are you pumped or what? <laughs> we, we've done everything, Rob. <laughs> Everything. We're happy to see Rob. We're happy to be I, here. We are happy to be here with Rob. Yeah. Movie making will be way easier than traveling. Is this officially day two or day one? How does that work? I would call it. Don't say 1.5. Don't don't start that. I didn't start it. Okay. We're going to go pick up the gear at the train station, from what I understand. Been unloaded. Only the engines are left. All the gear has been dropped off down at PowerCon. That's exciting news. I think that Bill Stout has probably got... Oh, is that who we're seeing? Uh, yeah. I think okay. Bill Stout. Production designer of Masters of the Universe, the live-action movie, of course. That was 
was in stereo. See how we did that? One of the things that David saw that, that really impressed him was my introduction of Evelyn. She's coming into the throne room to see Skeletor, and she has to go up a series of steps. So it looks like she's emerging from the underworld. And she's a bad guy, so it's like, oh, that's, that's perfect. Sorry, guys, this is the first day, first interview, so it's going to take me a few minutes to get it up. Nobody's complaining yet. Well, no, it might be. It might be he has, I, actually, he just signaled me. We're down a man. What does that mean oh. for, for production already? I'm already going, this week is going to be brutal. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to be like yet. I have to figure out a, this is the day, this is day one, so it's always full of like, okay, what's the new routine? What's going to happen? What do we have to do? Um, in order to like, we've only got cars that are so big. We've only got, you know, so many cases for gear, the right type of cases. So if you want to leave the camera built and you got to put it in the car, now it's going to take up this much more space. We're in the archive room of William Stout. Um, and what are we getting ready to we're check out? We're about to dig into some flat boxes, uh, some flat files, sorry, of uh, production design from all of Masters of the Universe. And as far as I know, it hasn't been uh, seen before. And this was my toning down the, the collaboration I did with Mobius, to where he had the battle gear, battle scrap and shrapnel and stuff strapped to his body. All the first names I came up with were which really dorky, like, whoa, man, come on. But I... It was keeping with my man theme. That's the generic if action figure line. Minimum, four good guys, four bad guys, a small accessory, a vehicle, and a playset. Because that's what they all had. We are in Cleveland's house, and his uh, large male cat is being boisterous. <laughs> the idea of this kind of Jack Kirby world where you had guys with swords and a lot of tech around, which is pure Jack Kirby, uh, who is, you know, he's like the Led Zeppelin of hero culture. I mean, they're still picking over his bones. Oh, that's nice. Nice, nice, nice. Look at that, that little Easter egg right there. And folks playing the home game. Later, when you watch Errol's interview, I want you to look on the shelves and see what other fun things you can make out. Now, Rob, you'll see them because we're here live. Do you think people at home will notice this? I don't know, but I think it's something we try to do in most of our frames. There's usually something that we've deliberately placed. The home game might be, what have the filmmakers put to balance the frame? Right. In this case, a lot of our work has been done for us. Yeah, he's got it. Are you ready to film today? Oh, that's good. <laughs> I'm gonna get kicked out. We've already had one warning. We're being too positive in the morning. This is day four. It's day four shooting. On our way to get some breakfast, start to day five. Today we speak with Barbara Hambly. Yeah. And uh, Tom Tito. Legendary animator, director, artist, illustrator, Tom Cito. With both He-Man and also She-Ra, you are the show is, yes, it centers around He-Man, but he has members of the team. She-Ra was more about the team. So Isaac, go ahead and explain this. Explain this, this is a, a poster that we are getting signed that's for. That's beautiful. Some of the backers. Oh, that's lovely. I found an awesome helper here. He's gonna yeah, help us bring some stuff up. Guy, like, came out of nowhere and he just started helping us with everything. He's a very positive individual. He's always thinking. When stuff is happening very fast, you don't, you know, you, you miss a lot. It's when things are moving very subtly or very slowly that that, that, that becomes very complicated to draw. <laughs> so th that's Isaac's artwork. Where are we off to today? Scott Niedlich. Did I say that too German style? I feel like this is an ongoing thing with you and people's names. I lived in Germany. I feel douchily like I have to pronounce the names German style. Scott Niedlich. Und, oh, I did it again. Oh, it's tough being bisexual, lingual. Uh, my job, when they moved me over to the marketing group, besides 
let me put together this you know, 90 day proposal for what became Maddie, was running the DC Universe line. So here's Spike Gore, my, my, my classic Spike Gore and my, my vintage Spike Gore. Um, you know, they, they were meant to be an idealized version of what we remembered as a kid. Please, no, sit down everybody, that's fine, sit down guys. 30th anniversary of my first date with my wife and I'm celebrating by making a He-Man documentary. And that's filmmaking in a nutshell. Some of us have to come back for Comic-Con for one of the other docs that we're in. Yeah. Isaac, what morning is it? Do you even know at this point? Nope. <laughs> I don't know what morning it is. I think it's either Tuesday or Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Okay. June 1st. Wow. We're into June. We're into June. That's impressive. It's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a milestone, I think. So we better also, that reminds me, we should probably find a restroom before we start. Oh, you've got that on camera. Most of the management of Mattel wanted to do a twist action waist. This is He-Man with a twist action waist. And I wanted to do a slice of life, which is basically a, a technique used in the package goods business that's basically a slice of life, a story. I wanted a kid with his father and just a little, basically, look like a Procter & Gamble commercial. It was such a step above in terms of creativity than just simply making advertising. The first uh, package, uh, first box, not blister card, box. It was a He-Man and Battle Cat, and Rudy did that, and uh, he was totally instructed to just knock Frazetta off, which I think he did a pretty good job, especially on, especially on the cat. The cat was awesome. Well, I'm just making sure we're all backed up here. Are you smoking? Yeah. What are you smoking? Toothpick. That's what we're doing right now, so we can show you this, what you're seeing right now, so I'm selecting what you're seeing right now, which means I've edited and selected what you're seeing presently at the moment. This is what I have to deal with. Oh my god. All day long in the car. Oh my god. Oh my god. Making these documentaries is not going to a few events. It's not going to a few people's houses. So the swing that you're in the middle of right now watching this, it's two and three interviews a day, every day, for two weeks. But you can see what happens as you get so much stuff. And the getting of one thing leads you to the next, leads you to the next, leads you to the next. So it's a really huge compilation issue. And again, that's why we made the joke with the trains. We want you to see how much goes into it in advance. If Rob was here with us right now, he'd be going through the same steps. He'd be pointing out some aspect where, you know, we're probably missing something, you know. He's a great believer in the franchise as well, so he knows what all has to be collected what that takes, what that means. And he's probably gonna say something right now like, Was it everything you expected when you walked through the doors or was it like, what have I gotten myself into? That.